Hey gang, thanks for joining me again today. You know that we are in an exciting time and uh, God is doing something. You know, we don't think about all these stuff that's happening like in in America with uh, elections and stuff like that and all kind of stuff that's happening. You know, uh, many times we are we are challenged to take sides. And the questions are, are you for him or are you for her? Remember those? Or what about, are you for them or for us? Or are you for this or are you for that? Or are you for me or are you for him or her or they or whatever, a company or whatever? You know, we know that if we answer the question, the other person, <laughs> we choose one side, the other person on the other side is going to be mad at us. Or if we choose one side, then the other side is going to say that we hate them. Or others are going to say, you hate that other side. <laughs> that, that cannot be true, or that could not be true, but that's the way that people think. You know, these questions are focused not on the answer or the results. They are focused on causing division. Oh, we want to know what side you're on. Why? You know, a, a guy I know, um, he was uh, traveling, and somebody asked him, who are you voting for? <laughs> Just like they ask our mayor. And uh, and his contestant, the person, person contesting against him or trying to get his job, uh, and and both of them, they asked him, who did you vote for? The answer should be, that's private. That's my own kuleana or my own business. But nowadays... People want to ask questions because they want to cause division. Did you know that there are questions that you do not have to answer? What? Guys ask you, oh, yeah. You know, one time I was um, coming home from my brother's house, and I think it was like Christmas or New Year's. It was in the middle of the night, nobody driving, and we happened to be going through an area that is uh, 25 miles an hour, 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And nobody was there. And like the other streets here on the Big Island, most of them are 35 miles an hour. So I was going about 40, 40 miles an hour. And the policeman pulled me over. And he said, you know how fast you were going? And I said, yeah. <laughs> I know how fast I was going. And I told him how fast I was going. He goes, you were speeding. And I go, well, it's 35 miles an hour. He goes, no, it's 25. And yes, I got a ticket. So when they ask you, you know how fast you were going? Just say, uh, I, I, I'm sure you're going to tell me. <laughs> well, praise God, the policemen, they're trying their best. Uh, and you know that uh, the, the questions that people ask, not every question we need to answer. And I heard Pastor Alan Townsend used to be the pastor of, uh, of Hilo Church of God. I heard him speak at one of our men's conferences. And he, and he said that. And I just thought, you know, that's right. Even, I even told him. I said, bro, that was, that was really good. Your message is really good. You know that, uh, what the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution says? It says, it doesn't say you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> it doesn't say that. Uh, it implies that. I'm, I'm going to get to that. It says, uh, nor shall, one part of it, okay, because it covers a bunch of things. It says, nor shall be compelled, you shall not be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against yourself, which means you don't have to answer questions or any questions, or you have the right to remain silent. Why? Because if you, if you say anything or answer anything, it can be used against you in a court of law. And you might be thinking, hey, what does this have to do with the Bible? I'm getting there. Hold your horses. <laughs> uh, this is what people mean when they say they plead the fifth. They, they have the right not to incriminate themselves. 
uh, according to the Free Fall Amendment, right? So why am I bringing this up? Because too many people feel forced or pressured to answer questions that others, especially those in authority, ask them. You know, this uh, brings up today's message or passage of Scripture, which is from Joshua chapter 5. And, you know, since I was talking about the fifth Fifth Amendment, uh, when people ask you, you know, stuff like that, you can say, I plead the fifth of Joshua. <laughs> All right. Uh, but before this, I'd like to give you a little background on how we got here to Joshua chapter 5. You see, Joshua had been chosen by God to replace Moses as the leader of the nation of Israel. Israel had just crossed over the Jordan uh, River on dry ground during a season when it was overflowing or it was flood time. God stopped the water while they crossed over. Man, that was a miracle, right? Then God provided food for them in the promised land. That was another miracle. And then God stopped the manna, which he was feeding them in the wilderness, because they were getting supplies from the new new place where, where they were in, the promised land. And, and that was a miracle too. That God, during the 40 years that they were in the wilderness, uh, God provided for them every day. And he continues to provide for us. And he continues to bring us into new lands, into new experiences with him. So, this is where the story picks up in Joshua chapter 5 in verse 13. And I'm going to read. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down on the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. So Joshua did so. Did you notice the answer that he had given? Are, are you for us or for our adversaries? You know, the, the, that question is, is something that we want to we wanna know. But his answer was no. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And then he says, take off your, your shoes or your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Doesn't this sound familiar? Doesn't it sound like what happened to Moses and the burning bush when he encountered God? Yeah, it does. Now, I know you are thinking, is this man who stood before Joshua the same person who spoke to Moses from the burning bush? Is this God? The answer is yes. You might say, <coughs> excuse me, you might say, how do you know that that's it? Well, wherever the presence of God is, that is holy ground. Right? You know, uh, many times we need a take off your sandals for this place is holy ground experience. We need that kind of experience. God promised Joshua that he would, <coughs> oh, excuse me, a bug. <laughs> God promised Joshua that he would be with him wherever he went. You can read that in Joshua chapter 1. In verse 9, just four chapters back. Okay? God is faithful. God keeps his promises. God never fails. God is not far from any one of us. God cares. You know, back to the answer. Um, he, the man of God, 
that stood before Joshua said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. You know, there is an appearance. Everybody thinks, oh, Jesus just showed up on Christmas morning. Or, you know, people say, well, he wasn't born on Christmas morning. Well, whatever. Whenever he was born, Jesus showed up. And that's the only time Jesus was here. Well, Jesus was, and he is, and he always will be. The same, Jesus Christ, the same. In Hebrews it said, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that means he existed. That means he existed in the Old Testament. Of course, God said to Moses when he was giving him the Ten Commandments, you know, I have I need to put you in this the cleft of the rock so that you can only see my backside, because if you see my face, you're going to die. Well, we can confirm that with Revelation chapter 1 when John heard a voice that sounded like many waters and he turned around and he saw this awesome being and he fell at dead before him. Who was he? <laughs> it was Jesus in his glorified body. Wow. So, why do you think this man gave this answer? No, I am I'm not for you and I'm not for them. I'm for the Lord. Well, my thought is that he, uh, that uh, is that he and God does not have to choose side. Okay? He, God, doesn't have to choose sides. You know, like when we were kids, we always wanted to be on the winning side. God, with or without us, already has the winning side. <laughs> that's why he's on his own side. Wow, that's pretty interesting, right? He only wants what is best for us because he already is the best. Are you struggling with some overwhelming problem or situation or crisis? Like Joshua's situation and the fate of the nation of Israel, we need God to show up to handle our business or direct us. Remember, it was, who was it? The, the men of Issachar who understood their times and knew what to do. That's what we need. We need God to help us understand our times and know what to do. Okay? There are groups of people that are seeking God and, and asking Him, what should we do today, God? Because your plan is still ongoing. Time, ha as we know it, has not ceased. So let's uh, read on in the next chapter. <clears throat> but let me make this long story short. Okay? The first city that the Israelites faced was Jericho. Fortified city. Okay? Big walls and everything. Its walls was estimated to be as high as a 10-story building in some places as you looked at it from where the nation of Israel was to walk around it, right? It, there was a wall, and then there was room, and then there was another wall, and, and those parts of that wall were really high, okay? And it wasn't, everybody said, well, it's a really, really big, 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 big city, you know, um, but then they couldn't have walked around it. You know, many times. You know, for all accounts, it seemed impossible to conquer Jericho. But God tells Joshua to have the people walk around it quietly while the priests continue to blow the trumpets and the ram horns in front of the Ark of the Covenant. They did that once a day for six days, and on the seventh day, they did it seven times and at the end of the seventh day and the seventh time walking around Jericho uh, they were to blast the horns and the trumpets and shout a great shout then the walls would fall down flat so that um, or so flat that no one would have to climb over any rubble or any anything to get into the city. And it's like, how is that going to happen? How does 10 stories go? 
fall down. If it falls down, then people have to climb over it. And they say that no, they didn't have to climb over anything to get into the city. Well, archaeologists have found that the walls went straight into the ground. And all the people were exposed. And Israel, with its millions of people around them, because it was a small city, went in, just walked in, and took over. And of course, you know, Rahab, who was, uh, who helped the spies, her house was on top of the wall, so when it went down, her house ended up ground level. She moved from the penthouse to the first floor. <laughs> you know, this happened just as God has instructed Joshua. So they had a great victory. You know, the only way that God was with Joshua and Israel was because they honored God and they followed his commands. As we read on in this story, we see what happens when there is sin in the camp and the results of it. Joshua realized that each and every situation or day we need to seek God's direction so that we will not be led into temptation. What is that temptation? To do it our own way. Well, is one of those, right? But be delivered from evil. They would have had a victory over Ai if they sought God again after their first victory. You know, and you might be saying, "Well, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that. I would have sought God." Well, then you're better than me and Joshua, right? So Jesus said in in John chapter three, six and verse thirty three. Uh, oh, I think it's Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. John, I'll put it in there. Okay. Um, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added as well. You know, we too have God with us so that we do not have to take sides. But pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God is not on our side. He is on his own side to accomplish his will so that his kingdom will come on our behalf and on behalf of all those who know him and love him and are called according to his purpose. That's what the Bible says. And honor him. Wow, that is pretty awesome. You know, taking sides only causes problems. You know, yeah, defend your family. Do what's right. Do all those things. You know, people don't have to. Are you on, on your on your own side or on your family side? Yes, <laughs> is the answer. You know, having standards, morals, and convictions is what is needed in a world that despises God and His creation. People are asking, why are there shootings in school and? Why all this stuff? Well, you, you kick God out. What do you expect? Right? We need God to help us every single day. So let's not take sides, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, help us. Lord, we are caused or we are called daily to make decisions. And sometimes uh, we get trapped into questions that we think we have to answer. But sometimes you said, go from, the foolish, go from the presence of a foolish man when you perceive not in him the words of knowledge. So if somebody asks us a question we don't want to answer, we can just walk away. So thank you, Lord, for helping us to be wise, to have wisdom. We call upon wisdom to help us. Lord, so as you were with Joshua, you said you're going to be with us. You'll never leave us or forsake us. So help us on a daily basis to make decisions that honor you as our God and give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Hi, Mom and Brother Keone. Hey, mahalo for watching. Aloha.